What if I told you that you can let OpenAI control your phone using WebRTC and React Native? Now, let's give this a go. I'm here to help. What can I do for you today? Um, can you tell me what is my phone's battery level? Your phone's battery level is at 95%. And to save some battery, can you completely dim my screen, please? I've completely dimmed your screen to save battery. And now Good. can can you flash my screen? I flashed your screen as you requested. Fantastic, amazing. And now can you set my brightness to maximum again, please? I've set your screen brightness to the maximum level. There we go. Um, and this is really the power of uh, OpenAI's new real-time API with WebRTC and Expo React Native. Okay, now let's have a look at how this works under the hood. So we're using the real-time API with WebRTC. Note it is um, still in beta at the moment. Um, but really, there's you know a couple of components we need. So here, the example is with um, the browser. So in our case, you know, instead of the browser, we have the uh, mobile phone, but actually this also works in browser. So this really is the power of React Native. Uh, we can actually have a, a browser shim to make it also work in the browser as well as your native mobile platforms, which is awesome. So um, what we need then is a server. So we need a secure server side component to create our ephemeral token. And once we have that token, we can then initiate this uh, direct WebRTC connection uh, directly from the client side. So for the secure server side component, you know, what better tool to use than Superbase Edge functions. Uh, and so let's have a look here. So this really is just a, a very small uh, Edge function. Do note, in order for this to work on the web platform, we need our course headers. So um, there's documentation on this as well how we can do this, but we just have a shared file here where we define the course headers that we need. Uh, and then we just import the course headers, we reply to our options request with the course headers. And then later as well, um, we need to put out the course headers in the response. But then really, we just need to create this real time um, session uh, with our open AI API key. So you can see here within the functions folder, we have an .env.example file open API key. So we then just deploy that as secrets to the Superbase platform. Uh, and then we can use it within our um, environment. So dino.env.get our open API key. And then uh, this is application JSON. And here we're just uh, choosing the model, which is GPT-40 real time preview. Uh, and we can specify the voice that we want to use if we're enabling, you know, the audio mode, uh, obviously here, and then we're just replying with um, the response body back as uh, JSON and our course headers. So then on the client side, here in our app, um, we're using this, um, which I told you enables the cross um, platform. There is uh, currently no type script uh, on that, but it's an open source project. So maybe I'll see if I can contribute the types uh, somehow, uh, because actually the original uh, WebRTC has great TypeScript um, support. But you know, for the React Native browser platform support, we want to use the WebRTC shim. And then basically just make sure that you're importing, you know, the media devices, RTC, uh, peer connection, RTC view, media stream, so import that from the library, and then we can use that across platform. Uh, one thing here to use the brightness with Expo, uh, we just need to make sure that we request the brightness permission. So as we're loading our app, uh, we're then requesting the brightness permission so that later um, the model can, you know, activate that with the client tools. Then just a couple state variables here. Um, we'll go through that in in a bit. But really, then what we're doing is, okay, we're doing voice only. So we're not using a video for our web RTC connection. So we're just setting that here. Um, and then we're starting our session. So as you remember, we then need to generate our thermal token. So we're just invoking 
our Superbase Edge function. Now, the great thing here as well, um, there's documentation how you can make that work um, with, you know, um, Superbase Auth. So Superbase Auth is also integrated with Superbase Edge functions. So you can make that work, um, you know, to make sure that only authenticated users can generate an ephemeral key, you know, since this costs money to chat with the real time API, that probably is a sensible thing to do. Uh, in this case here with the um, invoke, we're basically just checking that we have an authenticated um, anon key that we're using. So you can see here as well, we have the um, expo public supervised URL expo public supervised anon key, and we just have a util to basically create our client. So this is how we create a kind of standard react native um, client, you can find that in the documentation as well. Okay, and so now we have our ephemeral key. Um, one thing is just kind of setting up the audio mode to allow kind of playing audio in silent mode on iOS. Um, so that's something we can do here. Um, and then we need to set up our RTC peer connection. So that's what we do. We import that from um, the React Native Web RTC library. And so now we have our peer connection, we can add an event listener to listen to kind of the connection state changes. Uh, and then also this year is very important. So we're adding to the event listener, which is the um, track being added. So this is the remote uh, media stream. So we're then setting, uh, we have a reference here for our remote media stream. Um, in our, you know, variables, we're just using a reference where we're creating a new media stream. Um, and then we're basically just checking, okay, is a new track being added? Um, then we're adding the track to uh, our remote media stream so that we can later play the stream in our application. Next, we need to get the user media. So we just want audio true. So this is um, through the media devices uh, API. Um, and then, you know, we're just basically setting um, video tracks to, to um, you know, enabled faults, just in case so that only the media, the audio media is sent. Uh, and then we're here on our peer connection, we're adding a track, which is our um, local media track. So our local audio that's being added. Now, next step, we need to set up a data channel. So you can think of this kind of within this web RTC connection, you know, we can send our um, real time audio, but we also can open a channel to sort of back channel in the back um, to send events, um, kind of send text, you know, messages um, over this data channel. And so this is what we're kind of using to get our events um, from the open AI uh, real time API, but also to, you know, trigger um, our client side tools, for example. So this is where we're using the data channel. Uh, and so we're just creating this here with um, this name, uh, or AI events, we're calling it. And then what we need to do is we are uh, basically creating an offer through the session description protocol. Now, this protocol is a bit abstract kind of within the web RTC world. But you don't really need to know about this because, um, you know, open AI is just kind of implementing that on their end. So we just need to create um, an offer on the peer connection, set a local description with our offer. Um, and then we just need to send that offer to the OpenAI real time um, API. Uh, and then we get uh, our answer back here, um, the uh, SDP response. And so this is kind of the protocol to initiate our connection. And then we're basically just setting the peer connection, the remote description um, to the answer that we got from the OpenAI API. And then that is how we can set up kind of that direct connection uh, for WebRTC. Okay, so now that we have our connection set up, we have just a stop session here, we're doing some cleanup. Um, and then here, what we're doing is we're configuring our tools. So configuring our tools, we use the uh, session update event to uh, send that over the data channel, we'll look at what tools we have available. But basically, in our session update, um, we just you know, provide some instructions, your helpful assistant, uh, access to certain tools, check the battery level, change the display brightness, um, use these tools only, you know, if the user asks about it, otherwise, just kind of answer the questions. And then we need to send this um, session update event 
over our data channel. Uh, and then lastly, um, so we're just running this kind of in uh, a use effect. So we're checking, you know, do we have a data channel? When we have a data channel, we add some event listeners. So we have kind of the, the base uh, listener is this message channel. Um, and so we're just checking, okay, once we have a message, parsing that message into JSON, and then we have different types. So for example, here, the response audio transcript done type, uh, we can use to, uh, you know, render the transcript in, um, you know, the text basically, of what the model is saying, we can render that in the phone, that's what we're doing here. And then for our tool calling, it's very important, this one, so response function call arguments done. So this basically tells us that the model has found a function that it wants to invoke, uh, or, you know, a tool that it wants to invoke um, from, you know, our client tools, and it put together some arguments. Um, and so maybe in this, um, you know, we can use this now to jump into our tools. So you can see we need to define kind of a client tool schema. So this basically is the schema that tells our model about the available functions. So here we have the, you know, get battery level, we don't need any arguments for that, because uh, it basically just gets back the data to the battery level. Now for change brightness, we do have um, a parameter, which is a number between zero and one, representing the desired screen brightness. Um, so here, you know, the model needs to change, you know, decide basically if we're telling them, oh, set it to like the minimum uh, brightness, then it would invoke it with the parameter, you know, um, brightness being the number zero. Yes. And so lastly, then we just have a flash screen method. Uh, again, that doesn't need any in input because it just kind of quickly sets the brightness up and back down. So um, yeah, and then we're basically implementing our client tools here just tapping into the Expo React Native APIs. You can see for change brightness, we're just you know, taking in the argument number of the brightness. And then for flashing the screen, <laughs> we're basically just setting the brightness to 100%, waiting 200 seconds, uh, milliseconds, sorry, and then setting it back to uh, 0%. Okay, so these are our client tools. Uh, and so now basically we're just choosing um, the model chooses the right tool for the job and provides the arguments. And then what we're doing is we're um, just doing our tool call, we're waiting for the result to come back with um, our arguments from the model. And then what we need to do is we need to tell the model about the outcome uh, of the function call. So uh, we do conversation item create, and we set the function call output, um, we generate kind of a uh, call ID. Uh, so no, this is actually coming from the data um, is is the call ID. And then we provide provide the result back um, of the function call to the model. And then lastly, we want the model to respond, um, you know, immediately with kind of audio. So we need to send another message. So you know, we send this again over the data channel, this event, uh, conversation item, create, uh, and then lastly, we just need to send another event where we say response create, and then it'll do that for us. And so lastly, we have an event listener to just make sure we're listening to, you know, when the data channel is open. And so when the data channel is open, then we are configuring uh, our tools here. So we're sending these updates over the data channel um, when that is ready. And that is pretty much it. The rest is just some simple UI with, you know, a start button, a stop button, depending on if the session is active. And then here, this RTC view, again, we need to import from the uh, React Native WebRTC um, package. And we just need to put in the remote media stream, the current stream. Now this is different in uh, the shim. Uh, so just follow the instructions kind of from from uh, the React Native Web RTC uh, web shim, we can quickly look at that package. Um, so this is really uh, incredible work here. Uh, you can see this is, you know, basically just shimming it for um, the, the platform. And yeah, so this is automatically doing this here where it's, um, you know, based on the platform is putting in the right stream uh, URL. 
So in our case, um, for the RTC view stream. And so this will then automatically play um, the audio for us. So we just need to make sure we put the remote media stream. So that is the audio. Um, you remember we uh, set the remote media stream earlier on, you know, when we're getting our track back from the WebRTC connection uh, from the OpenAI server. And then we're just setting that. So then the RTC view will automatically play that um, on our device. And that is pretty much it. So just um, some, you know, few components, our secure server side function, which is our Superbase edge function should create the ephemeral key, our react native web RTC package, taking care of the connection initialization, and then we're off uh, up and running. So yeah, this is really neat. Um, you know, really, really cool things you can do with uh, kind of web RTC connecting directly to the OpenAI real time API from the client side, and you know, Expo React Native making that super easy to work across the the web and mobile platforms. So maybe I can just quickly show you npm run start, show you this running on the web as well. Uh, and you can see we just have the start button. So now we'll turn up the audio, um, start this here. So you can see in the console now, um, need to allow access to the microphone. Hi there. How can I assist you today? Hey, can you tell me what is my device's battery level? Your device's battery level is at 96%. Is there anything else I can help you with? Um, can you dim my screen? Sure, I can adjust the screen brightness for you. How dim would you like it? You can give me a percentage or a specific level between Just, zero and... Just uh, dim it to the minimum, please. I dimmed your screen to the minimum level. Let me know if there's anything else you need. Yeah, so um, the if you look at Expo brightness, um, brightness, uh, I think it doesn't work on the web platform. So there you probably need to distinguish kind of what tools are available. Yeah, so this is only on Android and iOS, whereas the battery one um, works as you saw as well. Uh, it gave me the correct, yeah, so that works on the web platform. Cool. Yeah, so this is pretty much it. Really, really neat things you can do. Do let me know kind of what other topics you'd like to learn about. And you know, tweet at us what you've built. We really love to see what you're building. Until next time, keep building cool stuff.